Hi guys, today I'll be talking about uh, hatch call maintenance and focusing specifically on some of the false beliefs that are uh, prevalent in the maritime industry about hatch call maintenance. Uh, before I get into the false beliefs, I'll also be talking about uh, some of the basic advice uh, given for hatch call maintenance and some of the things that we should definitely not be doing. Um, also make a note of the uh, diagram on the screen or the picture on the screen just to get an idea of the different parts involved in the hatch covers so that if you have never been on a ship, never seen a hatch cover, then at least you can get some idea of what we are talking about here. All right. Uh, so it is generally accepted that uh, leaking hatch covers are a principal cause of cargo becoming wet, uh, especially inside the cargo holes, of course. Now the P&I club has investigated numerous claims of cargo becoming wet and has discovered that hatches leak mainly for a variety of reasons, but mainly it's because of uh, poor maintenance or failure to close them properly altogether. Now, therefore, a degree of confusion is present whether hatches are constructed to be watertight or weathertight. And today we'll be talking about the difference between watertightness and weathertightness as well. Now, the confusion is apparent when surveyors check for water tightness during their statutory inspections and minor leakage during a test is often accepted as being within the standard for weather tightness, although the requirement is that there should be no leakage. Right. So some of the basic advice for hatch cover maintenance is that uh, you must rectify any steel to steel fault before renewal of rubber packing because uh, renewal will not be effective if steel to steel contact points are defective and expensive rubber packing will be ruined after only a few months of use. Uh, you must replace the missing or damaged uh, rubber packing immediately and uh, replace them in lengths of one meter because it's easier to manage when you replace them in lengths of one, one meter also easier to change them when required then. Uh, keep the hatch combing tops clean and the double drainer channels free from obstruction. Uh, open the hatch covers to clean the combing tops and the double drainer channels after loading specially bulk cargo to, through grain or cement ports. Uh, keep the cleats and the wedges in serviceable condition always and correctly adjusted. Keep hauling wires and chains adjusted correctly attach the locking pins and chains to open the doors and hatches keep the wheels cleats hinge pins haul wires and chain tension equipment well greased as well test the hydraulic oil regularly for contamination and deterioration and keep the hydraulic system of oil tight ensure that the oil tank of the hydraulic system is always kept filled to the operating level and with the correct oil now, especially if your hatch covers are old, you will see how quickly they consume of this oil. So, it's, uh, if the older the ship, it's better that you keep an eye on this uh, oil level in the hydraulic systems. Uh, because we will be using oil based hydraulic systems, there will be some kind of oil spills, especially as the ship starts to get older. So, make sure you clean up the oil spills and if the leak cannot be stopped immediately, then uh, approach it with a save all. Uh, kind of a mentality to contain the oil and empty it regularly. All right. Engage the twin deck hatch cover cleats when the panels are closed. Uh, give notice that maintenance is being performed so that no one tries to operate the hatch cover when you're carrying out any kind of maintenance. Remember that continuing and regular maintenance of hatches will be definitely more effective and less expensive than sporadic inspection and major repair. In any case, make sure that you do not allow grooves to form in the combing top, especially where the hatch side or the end panel rests when the hatch is closed. Do not apply any kind of petroleum based grease or paint to the rubber packing. Do not remove the rubber ball from a non return drain valve. Do not use anything other than the recommended hydraulic oil. Do not leave the cleats unfastened when proceeding to sea and do not attempt to open or close any hatch cover that has a cargo or load on it. Also, do not open hatch covers at sea unless absolutely essential and leave open covers unattended when at sea. Do not do so. Finally, do not tighten down the cleats so that the hatch cover is unable to move on the combing top. So it should not be so tightened that it is unable to move on the combing top. Now we get into some of the false beliefs that are known to the mariners. Now the first false belief is that it is the rubber seal that keeps the water out of the cargo. Now that's not true because the double drainage system is as important in keeping water away from the cargo. 
The next false belief is that renewing a worn rubber seal is all that is needed to keep a hatch watertight. And that's a false belief as well because worn rubber is usually the result of worn steel to steel contact surfaces or a deformed structure. Now renewing the rubber alone will be futile or useless unless the steel to steel contact surface is repaired. Is water tightness the same as weather tightness? No, it's not. Because from a hatch cover design perspective, water tight means that water cannot get in or get out. Whereas weather tight means that water cannot pass through the seal. It just cannot get in. The hatch cover side plate when closed should rest on the combing top. That's another false belief because if the weight of the hatch panel is sufficient to cause distortion of its side plate or a hatch skirt, then landing pads are fitted to the panel to transfer the weight evenly across the combing top. Another false belief is hatch covers will always leak in heavy weather. Now hatch covers are designed to withstand the rigors of the sea. Therefore, provided the cleats are correctly adjusted, hatch gaskets are in good condition and the construction material sound, then hatch covers should not be leaking regardless of the weather. Another false belief is that screwing cleats down hard will ensure the water tightness. Well, no amount of tightening of cleats beyond their correct position will improve hatch water tightness. Now, hatch cover manufacturers usually test for water tightness without engaging the cleats. So the weight of a hatch is sufficient to create the required gasket compression. Another false belief is that the use of hatch cover tape will ensure water tightness. It's, that's not true because the use of a sealant tape gives a false sense of security. Hatch cover tape is a short term temporary measure that can be used to stop water from entering cross or side joints. However, the prolonged use of tape increases corrosion in the cross joint and side plate. In bad weather, sealing tape can and does wash off. Another false belief is that drain valves are not important. It does not matter if they are blocked. Well, drain valves are an essential feature of the double drainage system as they allow water that has penetrated the rubber packing to drain away. If the valve is closed or blocked, water will spill from the drainage channel into the cargo hold. When carrying cargo on top of hatch, it is not necessary to fasten cleats. Well, that's a false belief as well because cleats do prevent excessive movement of the hatch as the ship bends and flexes in a seaway. But they allow limited movement to ensure correct contact between the hatch and its combing, preventing hatch damage. Cargo loaded on the hatch does not secure the hatch to its combing. Another false belief is that twin deck cleats are not essential because the twin deck covers are not watertight. Well, cleats on twin deck covers should always be engaged when the covers are closed. This is because they stop twin deck panels from jumping when a ship pitches or rolls or moves in heavy weather ensuring maintenance of twin deck strength. When cargo is stored on a twin deck panel, the panel must be secured to the ship's structure. Finally, the last false belief is that most leakage problems occur because of poor maintenance. Well, of course, poor maintenance is an important part, but although robust hatch covers will leak if compression surfaces are not aligned correctly and if gaskets become damaged or worn. And with wear and tear and use and the frequent the cargo operations, gaskets do become damaged or worn with time. So it's not always because of poor maintenance, but also because of wear and tear.